Have you ever heard of hypoxia? It's a condition that could be a threat to your safety when you travel by air. It's oxygen deprivation, and there have been several deadly crashes here in the U.S. involving pilots getting disoriented or even passing out from a lack of oxygen. CBS 5's Jeff Van Zandt investigates on how hypoxia training might be lacking, putting pilots as well as passengers at risk. Sixteen. I think I started feeling um, very happy, very, uh, very kind of giggly. Uh, I just wanted to smile all the time. And we're on the way up. Well, I get um, kind of tingly fingers, and then the tingling will kind of spread up my arms and legs and my extremities. Up two, three, zero. And then I'll kind of start to get tunnel vision, um, and then I generally will just start to just feel just bad. You can turn the 100 white switch back to normal if you're feeling okay. I just don't feel good at all. Gang load and the regulator. Pilots get a unique experience, a high altitude chamber. And, uh, heading up at about 3,000 feet a minute. Experiencing what it's like 25,000 feet up while safely on the ground. At altitude, they remove their oxygen masks. Turn your regulators off. To induce hypoxia, starving the body of oxygen. Reactions vary. Some you can tell, others start to laugh. He's already chuckling. Uh, it just makes you more aware of, of yourself and, and your own body's limitations. From 25,000 feet to a massive decompression. <laughs> at 45,000 feet. It's all vital training for a pilot to have. Uh, blood oxygen levels got down to about 66, um, but I still felt func functional, at least enough to put my mask back on. I recognize uh, that I had uh, some hypoxia. Hypoxia has led to several deadly crashes here in the U.S. The most high profile, October 25th, 1999. Pain stored is the 19. Golfer Payne Stewart's Learjet lost cabin pressure, incapacitating the crew and passengers. The plane crashed. All on board died. Helios Airways Flight 522 crashes in Greece. Outside Helios the U.S. Airways in 2005, Helios Flight 522, a 737, lost cabin pressure. It flew for hours and crashed, killing 121. A few, quite a few. Uh -oh. Loss of cabin pressurization and the crews didn't do what they should have. It's not just cowboys in the sky, we have to be safe. High altitude chamber training isn't mandatory to become a civilian pilot. The FAA only requires classroom work, talking about hypoxia, but nothing like this. Masks changed, let's do another check with 11. It's a financial thing. Rob Dietrichs runs the high altitude chamber at ASU. He has years of flying experience in the Air Force and as a private pilot. He's also helped in the investigation of more than 20 high profile airline crashes. Rob says it comes down to cost. In order for the pilots to go through training, I've got to pull them off of service on the flight line, and I've got to pay them to come to this training, as well as pay for the uh, pay their wages and pay for their training. Thank you. Training like this runs into the thousands. It's up to the individual pilot to pay. It's, it's having the, the knowledge behind it because if you had someone who had no, no prior training in hypoxia and they got it, they wouldn't know. We have to be aware of it because the FAA says that we need to. However, unless you've experienced it, I mean, you just don't know. Hypoxia training could be better. It only increases the safety of pilots and passengers. Airlines could require it before piloting a large aircraft. I'm at flight level three. But it might have to take a disaster to make that change. But until we have one that uh, takes um, an airliner down. Pilots misunderstood the warning signal due to hypoxia. In the United States, gotcha. you're going to politically not be able to get industry to uh, start insisting.